Well, it's good to be back in his house again tonight. That's good crowing, bro. <laughs> He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, sir. That's probably one of the best songs Andre Crouch wrote, yeah. God Be the Glory. Well, we want to tonight, if we can, hang out again in those Mick Tom Psalms, where the cluster is. We'll not read a text, but we'll read a little bit and preach a little bit. And uh, I don't know if you're interested in studying the scripture a little bit more. I have two or three little places you can go. Of course, I've been put off of Facebook. I've been banned from it. I'm sorry. I'm no longer there. They, they said I do not meet community standards. Praise the Lord. But I, I know you say praise the Lord, but... Uh, there was 300, 300 live stream videos lost. And uh, two gentlemen that I met through this work uh, that live in Nova Scotia, the closest fundamental church to them is 100 miles away from them. And they use those videos for church. So uh, it's not really an amen. It's an old me. And, but if you're interested in studying some more, we do have a sermon audio page. Tom Gillum, Bible Truth, all little letters run together. We have a YouTube channel. It's at 714 Preacher. And we do have a website, TomGillum.com. Between the three of them, there's probably three or four hundred uh, videos on there if you're interested in uh, studying the Word of God a little more. Uh, we're going to look at the Mick Tom Psalm tonight in Psalms 59. Uh, you remember we said this morning that the Psalms has been called God's hymn book. God's hymn book. And uh, we look this morning at Psalms 57 it was a hymn of God when David was in a cave forsaken. And it's true of all six of these Mictom Psalms that David shares with us a side of the many faceted diamond that we call God. And this morning he shared a very simple but so deep truth with us from Psalms 57. And it was this, God is with us. Amen. God is with us. It'd be wonderful if that would overwhelm us tonight, that God is with us. This here in Psalms 59 from the title, we are told that uh, this is written when Saul sent and they watched the house to kill him. This is when Michael made the little dummy in the bed and they have come to destroy David. And it is a hymn tonight of God when David was in confident faithfulness. And I want us to see this side of God tonight, this facet. It's been such a help to me to think about it. And it is this. God is faithful. He's dependable. He's trustworthy. There will never be a time when he's not there for you. He is a God who is faithful. It is in this text that David is overwhelmed, not with his faithfulness to God. Sometimes we foolishly make a big to-do about our faithfulness to God. But it is here that David makes a big to-do about God's faithfulness to him. God is faithful. And notice as we unpack the text, uh, there is the acknowledge the practice that edifies. 
says to the chief musician in the title, it's been given to the choir leader down at the temple after David wrote it. He said, Al Tashhath, he is stamped upon it. Don't discard this song. It's very important. And he says it is a miktam of David. The word miktam, the Hebrew word, engrave it in their memory by singing it over and over and over again. I don't know about you, I don't want to forget tonight that God is faithful. God is faithful. Jeremiah said in one of the darkest days of Israel's history and lamentations, he says his compassions and mercies fail not. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Paul says, there hath no temptation taken you, such as is common to man. I hear young people often talking about, ah, you old people, y'all don't know what we're going through. We have it far worse than y'all did. The devil's really after us. The devil has never changed his tactics since the beginning of man. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful. That with the temptation, he will also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. The faithful God accompanies every temptation with a door to get out of it. Did I not read somewhere in the Bible where Jesus said he was the door? So every time the devil tempts you, Jesus is standing there and says, Hey, you ain't got to do that. Here's the door out. So you do not have to tell your mate that you accidentally did that. It is a lie. You ran by the door. Because he is faithful. Paul said, faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. He's not interested in us doing it. Yeah. He will do it. Here, he is surrounded by Saul and his enemies. They have come to kill him. And here, he identifies that God is faithful. I see also in the text... There is an acknowledgement of the plot of the enemy. Notice for David, it was a visible plot. He says in verse number one, deliver me from mine enemies. Oh, my God, defend me from them that rise up against me. David said that Saul is plotting to destroy me. I hated to come tonight with bad news. Satan tonight is plotting to destroy you. He has a plot. He says in verse number three, he says, for lo, they wait, uh, they lie and wait for my soul. They, that little word soul, they, they want my breath. They want to cut it off. Satan is plotting, but I have good news. Satan's plotting and God's a planning. I hear that plannings trump plot. I love the hound out of that. I don't know if you've ever played Rook before, but when you throw down the trump card, it's all over. Satan is applauding, and God says, I'm faithful. It is over, Satan. You have been checkmated. I'm so glad of that tonight, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, great is his faithfulness. It's a visible plot. 
But I notice in the text that it is a vicious plot. I do remind you tonight that Satan is not playing games tonight. He's serious about what he's doing. I can assure you tonight, he will not go to sleep tonight. You may sleep. He will not sleep tonight. He is plotting to try to get you tomorrow. It is a vicious plot. David said in verse 6, they return at evening. They're coming in the dark. Satan always loves the dark. I don't know about you. I don't like the dark. Never have liked the dark. I have two Georgia power poles at either end of my house. Keeps the whole yard lit up 24 hours a day. The birds won't even roost in my yard because they think it's daytime there all the time. There's a 100 watt bulb burning in my house right now. Burning there all the time. I replace it constantly so it don't ever burn out. You say, oh, you're crazy. No, wonder where you got a 100 watt bulb burning in the house. You're not even home. Somebody breaks in, I want to be able to see what they're doing. They tear up things when they can't see what they're doing. You listen to me, I don't like the dark. I keep two or three lights burning at night. I don't like the dark. Satan likes the dark. It's a vicious plot. He says in our text, in verse 7, he says, Behold, they belch out with their mouth. Satan emits vileness bubbling up like noises of a dog coming from their mouth. He says in verse number 7, Behold, they belch out with their mouth, swords are in their lips. For who say they doth they hear? This vicious plot of Satan, he comes with a, a flaming sword. Well, I'm glad our faithful God says that I have given you the sword of the Spirit. Oh, Satan's sword will have an end. I hear tell this book is forever. I love that, don't you? Well, let's stop right there and shout. How can that be true, preacher? Because our God is faithful tonight. I see not only is there the acknowledgement of this practice that edifies, but there's the acknowledgement of the position to be enjoyed. Notice in verse number three, the who of the position. Where is David going to go? They've got the house surrounded. Probably ought to sit down and suck his thumb. Go over on Wednesday night and y'all pray for me. They're going to kill me. No! He resorts to his position. Says in verse 3, For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me. Closes out the verse. He returns to his position in Christ. Oh, Lord. It's a cry of desperation. He calls him in verse number five. Oh, Lord God of hosts. Oh, is a term of desperation. He calls him the Lord, all caps. Yahweh, Jehovah, the God who is the great I am, the Yahweh God. He's not the God who was. He's not the God that shall be. But for all the zillion years of forever, he will always be the God who is now. Amen. How in the world can he always be now? I don't know if you've gotten it yet or not. It is because he is faithful. I'm glad I've got a now God, aren't you? He is the God of right now. Here the house is surrounded. David, what are you doing? He is kneeling beside his bed and he is praying, seeking the Lord God. He calls him in our text, Oh, Lord God of hosts. 
There's an interesting title, the God of Israel. I was interested in that Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel. Literally, the little phrase means the one who wins all battles before he fights them. You know, I wouldn't mind fighting any of you tonight if I knowed I could whoop you before we started. I said, bring it on. But there's two or three of you here tonight that I got reservations that it wouldn't go well for me if I was to get in a fight with you. But see, God never takes on a battle. He has not already determined the outcome before he started the battle. He says, I have already conquered and I have already. Well, how in the world does he get to win all my battles before I even fight him? It's awful deep. I don't know if you can get it. I'll be way over your head because God is faithful tonight. I'm so glad of that tonight, aren't you? He is the Lord God. David has resorted to the who of his position. I notice that he resorts to the what of his position. He says in verse 3, For lo, they wait to lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgressions, nor for my sin. David said, this has not happened to me because of my transgressions or my sin. He mentions it again in verse 4. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. I am not at fault. David, how in this world can that be that you be without transgression, without fault? I'm telling you tonight, because of our faithful God who has died for us and saved us tonight, he has placed us in Christ tonight, and he has taken all of our sins tonight, past, present, and future, and he has absolved them tonight, and he has placed me in a state where my sin does not exist anymore. They are G-O-N-E, gone. How can that be? Because our God is faithful tonight. I love that, don't you? I know, I watched some of you when I went through that little presentation, all my sins were gone. You did this. <laughs> Sitting in my study in the early 1980s on the University of Georgia campus where I pastored for 18 years, I first come to the conclusion that all my sins were gone. And I like to have tore up the study. Because I had been stacking them. See, I know why some of you didn't get excited because you've never done more than one or two things wrong in your life. And for you to find out it's gone, it's only one or two things gone. But for me, wow, I got woo, plum excited. You're listening to me tonight. God is faithful tonight. David He's returning and he's acknowledging not only the who of his position, but the what of his position. But I notice also that he acknowledges the power to be experienced by the fact that God is faithful. You know, there's a difference, grave difference, in an exposition of God being faithful and experiencing God being faithful. I'll be honest with you. You can can the sermon. I'll take the experience of God being faithful to me. I noticed for David there was a powerful deliverance. He says in verse number one, deliver me. Oh my God. I was extremely interested in that little word deliver means to snatch from the brink of perishing. Oh, how many times my faithful God has come right at the last minute and snatched me from the jaws of this and the jaws of that. Oh, the powerful deliverance. He says in verse number two, deliver me from the workers of iniquity. 
He, he calls him in verse number nine, for God is my defense. He is my deliverer. God is faithful tonight. I don't know what you'll find yourself in between here and the graveyard, but you can rest assured tonight God is faithful. He will deliver. He says in verse number 10, O Lord, our shield, calls God his hiding place. He says in verse number 16, he says he is my refuge. A place that is impenetrable by the enemy. Oh, the enemy cannot get to us tonight when we're in him tonight. He says in verse number 17, he is my strength tonight. Say, pray for me tonight, preacher. I tell you, I just don't feel like I can put one foot in front of the other. You got any idea what I need to do? Yeah, get to God. He is our strength. Because God is faithful. Of course, David ends these sections. The Bible tells us in verse number 13 and verse number 5, he ends the section with the word Selah. It has that idea of a whole note. Pitch it high has the idea of changing the focus from a downward focus to an upward focus. I love what old John Phillips said about this word, Selah. He says it means, hey, what you think about that? I would say to you and I tonight that God is faithful. Hey, what you think about that? God being faithful. Can you imagine the likes of God being faithful Amen. to such an unfaithful, can't count on us, so untrustworthy, Amen. so in de- undependable. Uh, he one day, whoa, ain't God good. Next day, pray for me. I don't know how in the world I'm going to make it. But he is faithful. Oh, there is a powerful deliverance. He says in verse 16 of our text, he says, but I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing real quiet so nobody can't hear me. No, he don't even say that in the living Bible. (laughs) I will sing aloud so everybody can hear me. I love that, don't you? None of that soft singing where nobody, I tell you, if you sing in the choir, you ought to have a throat ache when you get out. Powerful singing, powerful deliverance. I love that little word power. I will sing of thy power. The little word is the little word doulos. We get our little word uh, excuse me, dynamo is the little word. We get our little word dynamite from it, explosion. Of course, it's not the word for the boom. No, 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 no. These people that set charges in buildings and uh, they're going to implode the building, they're going to bring it down. They set charges all over the building. They go across the street or at a distance and they've got a little box. They push a button, causes all those explosions. The little box is the word Paul uses, uh, the word David uses here, power. So when God saved me, he put the dynamo inside. See, I don't have to baboom one time. There's a lot of people come to an altar, pray a little prayer, they baboom one time, you don't see them anymore. Yeah. If he's ever saved you, he put the baboon box inside of you. You can keep on baboon. How come? Because God is faithful. I notice last of all, there is the acknowledgement of the praise of the exalted. Notice the what of the praise. He says, I will sing of thy power. I will sing aloud. We must give God glory 
we must sing. We must show and display our emotions, our worship. You cannot come over here set with your arms folded in a disgusted look and call it worship. It's no, it's not true. Oh, the what of the praise. David said, I would sing aloud, sing publicly. But I noticed the win of the praise. He says in verse 16, but I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercies in the morning. David says, when my feet hit the floor in the morning, well, I tell you, preacher, I'm just not a morning person. Sure enough, what kind of person are you? Well, I'm a night person. Well, break out in a song before you go to bed then. Huh? Oh, Arthur Pink said that he was not a morning person. He said he liked to sleep until near noon. But he said he did like to stay up all night and burn the midnight oil, giving God praise and honor and glory. I don't know what kind of person you are, but sometime during the day, you ought to give him praise. How come I ought to do that? Because he is faithful. I notice the who of the praise. He says in verse number 17, O oh, unto thee, O oh, my strength, will I see, for God is my defense. I love the little word God there, big G, little O, little D. The little word Elohim. God's a plural. God's plural. I thought that the Jews of the Old Testament believed there was just one God. They did. They believed somehow, some way, there was three of them. They did not know how to explain it. So they called him Elohim. God's a. Of course, when we get into the New Testament, we realize they were right. There is three of them. They're co-equal. One's not higher than the other. I tried to explain it years ago as God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. That God was number one, uh, uh, God the Son, number two, God the Holy Ghost, number three. I, I said, that just won't work. No. So maybe I would put them on top of one another. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. God the Father, the top. God the Son, the middle. God the Holy Ghost at the bottom. I said, that won't work. So finally, I just said, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, the three in one, the Elohim. The little word Elohim has a very interesting meaning underlining the word, the one who makes all things from nothing. If you're not nothing tonight, God can't make nothing out of you. If you're something tonight, he ain't fooling with you. All he works with is, I tell you, preacher, just pray for me. I'm just nothing. I just never have been much. I'm just, God can use you, honey. That's the only thing he works with is nothing. How come? Because God is faithful. I love the way the old songwriter put it. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou shalt forever be. Pardon for sin, a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with 10,000 besides. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Oh, 
I did not know if you'd see that word in the song I thought I'd underline it. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord God, unto me. I just come by here from Georgia t today to tell you that God is with us. And I did not know if y'all had heard way up in here in Tennessee, but he is faithful, preacher. 